Back in the early millennia, there was never such thing as a gaming chair. And in fact, I remember being a high school student at this time and all our friends who were playing video games, we were all talking about high back office chairs. If you were gaming for extended periods of time, you wanted to get yourself a high back office chair with, of course, leather. Though, at the time we knew it was fake leather, but it didn't matter because it was comfortable, it was a good chair, and it had good build quality. Fast forward another decade, office chairs were still in fashion. People were getting them, whether they were gamers or people in offices. But in the last decade from 2010 to what is soon to be 2020, chairs have taken this turn where they're practically advertised as gaming chairs. Now, the word gaming needs no introduction. It's marketed on basically anything that a gamer could use. Myself, I'm guilty of advertising a PC as a gaming PC. If I didn't do that, the computer just simply wouldn't sell. However, on the flip side, the PCs that I sell are geared up towards gaming, whereas opposed to an office PC, couldn't play games like a gaming PC. Another example of this would be a gaming mouse. When we compare that to an office mouse, for instance, we now have extra buttons, a lighter weight, and a better sensor, all of which arguably gamers do need. And we look at a keyboard, we've got faster actuations, and we've also got extra macro keys that people in the office might not need. So the extra price of a gaming component in these fields is justified. But when we compare all that now to a chair, or in more particular, a gaming chair, what would one gain out of paying extra money for that said chair? Well, today we've got two chairs from Vertigear. We've got their Trigger 350 SE and also their PL4500. And these were sent in for review. And when I first got them, I thought to myself, wow, this is the be all and end all of chairs. However, after using them for two weeks and editing videos on them and day in day out, and I do spend a lot of time editing videos, there were some imperfections. And don't get me wrong, when we look at the price tag of these chairs, they're coming in at over 500 USD for the PL4500 and 800 USD for the Trigger. And then when we look in the Australian dollar terms, it's 1100 Aussie for that same Trigger chair. And then also for the PL4500, 680 Aussie dollars. That is a lot. And I stress this, a lot of money to be spending on a chair. Though before these chairs came in, I was using a Thunder X3 chair where I did a vlog where that chair actually had a problem where it broke down after a few years of use. I'll put the link to that video up there. Though these chairs coming in, I can tell one big difference between the Thunder X3 chair and the Vertigears. And that is that the Vertigears are in a different league when it comes to build quality. The way these chairs have been designed with the materials is second to none. Vertigear really put a focus on giving the best materials possible on their chairs. From the base of the chair using aluminium, all through the whole chair itself in the frame using aluminium, these are geared up to last. Now on the PL4500, which we've got in a white and black theme here, this features velvet on the main areas that you sit on, and then on the sides it features leather. And then the armrests are made of hard plastic, which are height, swivel, and back and forth adjustable. Three of the chair itself, you can adjust the height and you can adjust the tension of the way it sways back and also sway the chair back manually or have it on a tilt-based freestyle swing. Though, even though this chair may seem great, the one problem I had with the PL4500 was that the included cushions didn't really match up, especially the headrest, didn't line up to where my neck would sit. And so there's no option to adjust this to bring it down a little bit lower. So me being 5'10", by any means, I'm not exactly tall, but I'd still like to see uh, Vertigear cater for dudes of my height perfectly when I'm spending this kind of money. But speaking of the chair itself, the PL4500 ended up being more comfortable in the long term than the Trigger 350. Though this now brings us to the Trigger 350, which comes in different colors, though this one here is the maroon red. And they've got the shortcuts, I guess, inspired from a racing car on the left and right hand armrests, in that you can quickly adjust the height of the chair with your right hand, or on your left hand, you can quickly lock the swivel base of the back in place so you don't have it moving around. It's also just like the PL4500, got a tension lever that you can wind up and raise the tension of the back swivel, or you can loosen it up. But you may be wondering, really Brian, all that extra money for a couple of shortcuts on the left and right hand side, 
and this is where it does get a little bit more intricate with this chair. You can adjust the base of the chair and move that forwards and backwards as well as being able to get wheels that have stoppers and so you can stop the wheels on the fly. And you've also got a proper lumbar support system at the back of the chair, as well as an included headrest, which I've actually opted to not use after spending a bit of time with it. On top of that, they do include wheels that have stoppers, so you can stop the wheels at any time and stop the chair from moving, as well as using a mesh material on the base or rear of the chair. Now this same material that makes it easy for your back to mend in with the chair is actually also a double-edged sword for me personally in that after sitting in this for two weeks, I felt like my gluteus maximus was actually starting to concave in a little bit in that it was starting to hurt after using this for a good week. And I can quickly show you guys what I mean by this by pressing two hands on this chair. And then if I go to the PL4500, if I press in the same two spots, you'll see that the actual sides of the chair don't compress inwards. And so what it's doing is it's sort of concaving in that gluteus maximus to the point where it's actually causing me a little bit of discomfort. And make no mistake about it, if someone's to go out and pay 1100 Aussie dollars on a chair, I would definitely like to see them getting a perfect chair at this price point. And so I feel like ultimately on the Trigger 350 for me personally, the mesh does let it down a little bit in that it hasn't been implemented at least to my body. And so how I'd like to see this fixed was them to use some support straps on the bottom or simply use a different base of the chair in place, something like the Peel 4500, where I feel like the base of this chair that I'm sitting in at the moment is actually more comfortable for day in, day out use. Another two critiquing points I have about the trigger is I'd like to see adjustable lumbar support as well as an adjustable headrest in that you can tilt it backwards, forwards, upwards, and downwards because it just really didn't sit at a good spot where I was naturally sitting in this chair every day. Though those critiquing points aside, I can't help but think Vertigear makes some of the best chairs in the industry. I would consider their build quality right up there with the likes of Ergo Human and also Herman Miller, where these two particular brands are renowned for being the top dogs in the industry. And of course they carry, just like these Vertigear chairs here, a hefty price premium. Though those critiquing points out of the way, it doesn't negate the fact that Vertigear simply make a phenomenal chair in terms of build quality. Assembly is super quick to set up. It took me only five minutes for each of these chairs and all the included tools and instructions were very easy to read. Another thing I really like about both these chairs is they don't make any squeaking noises or there's nothing that's rattling or shaking, unlike some of the cheaper chairs I have used in the past. Now for me personally, coming out of this video, this is going to be a tricky one because I personally prefer the PL4500 over the 350 SE. And this is a chair that's coming in near half the price, at least in Australia, than this special edition 350 is. And so that brings us now down to the question of, when it comes to choosing a chair, it's very difficult to get an opinion like mine or even go to a store and try one. I was gonna say in this video, well, just go to the store and try the chair that matches you best. But as we saw with the Trigger 350 SE, initially I was blown away with this chair, but then after using it for a good week, I then started to notice some discomforts and some little things that I didn't like about it. So if you are to go out and spend $1,100 on a chair, I'd probably want to get some kind of guarantee where, hey, if I don't like this chair, can I bring it back and replace it for a different model until I find the model that I'm really comfortable with. If a chair manufacturer could provide that kind of service, then I would be blown away. Because as it stands, picking a chair for you guys and also myself is one of the most difficult things. And coming out of this review, all I can say about these chairs right here is that there are some little things I didn't like, but the build quality is phenomenal. And in the end, I ended up picking out the PL4500 because it was more comfortable for me. And that's without the headrest support or the lumbar support cushions. So I've just got the natural chair as it is, and that's it. Though ultimately tying this back to the original question of the video, are gaming chairs overpriced? I'd say most of them are yes. For me personally, I feel like the Trigger SE is a bit overpriced at its current price point, though I feel like the PL4500 is definitely coming in at a decent price point in Australia. When I look at the US pricing, it's a little bit off 
considering if we convert that money into Aussie dollars, we are still paying 10% GST in Australia and we're getting a much better price. So basically, if you're in Australia and you're looking for a really top quality chair, then the PL 4500 gets my okay. Though as for this special edition chair, I'd recommend having a good sit down in it for a long period of time before you make up your mind. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. Also, let us know in the comments section below, what's your history with office chairs or gaming chairs? Have you got recommendations of your own? Do you agree with what I said in today's video? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always, but we've got the question of the day now, which comes from Harry, a pilot, and they ask, are two 2080 Supers in NVLink any good? And this comes off the back of the video of two 2070 Supers, which I'll put the link for up here, where we tested them out and basically the conclusion was, depending on the game, you can get some massive boosts. The same would apply for 2080 Supers. It really depends on the games you're going to play. If you're only playing one title and that can benefit from it and you want the max FPS possible, then yes. But if you are playing a variety of games, then I'd recommend against it. That's my recommendation. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. And if you've watched this far and you're still watching and you're not subbed, sub button's down there. Ring that bell to get the content as soon as it drops. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.